Welcome students. We will begin with your economics classes. Now we would be revising whatever we have done during the period of time so that you can get ready for your upcoming exams. So today we are going to take up the very first chapter that is Indian economy on the eve of independence. Now we will begin with the basics. To begin with, the state of economic development. As we all know that Indian economy was a vulnerable state after the 300 years of British colonial rule. And it was for the first time that Dr. V.K.R. V. Rao, Dada Bhai Naroji, William Digboy made an effort to estimate the national population and the facts related to census and the estimate of India's national and per capita income was done. Then we take up the backwardness of the agricultural sector. When we come to the backwardness of agricultural sector, the basic problem that Indian agriculture was facing was a defective land terrioral system under which the actual tiller was not the cultivator of the soil and he did not had the right to make any changes related to cultivation. Forced commercialization of agriculture. Britishers forced the Indian farmers to grow cash crops like indigo, jute, cotton, spices. The main reason was that the Britishers needed raw material to feed up the industrialization process taking place in Britain. And the Indian farmers were not paid fair remunerations for their effort. The third setback to the Indian agriculture was faced because of partition. Because of partition, most of the jute growing areas went to Bangladesh, whereas the factories and the industries remain in India. As such that the industries faced shortage of raw material. Then let us take up the industrial sector. De-industrialization. There was a decline of the Indian handicraft industry facing tough competition with British machine-made goods. Capital goods industries were lacking. There was lack of capital-based industries like iron and steel industry, heavy industries, machine-making industries. Thus, the economy could not boost up the national output and the GDP was low. Limited operation of the public sector. The public sector was limited and was confined in its operation. It was basically the railways, defense that was owned and managed by the government and the government was not actively involved in promoting the industrial development process in the country. Discriminatory tariff policy. The tariff policy was unfavorable for India in two ways. Number one, huge taxes were imposed on British manufactured machine made goods, making them costly for the Indians. Secondly, the raw materials were being exported to Britain from India and all the duties were abolished, making it cheaper to Britain. Thus, it was a loss of revenue to the government and the country in both ways. Competition from machine-made goods. Machine-made products provided tough competition to the indigenous goods produced 
by the small scale and cottage industry, particularly the handicraft industry. Introduction of Railways The foundation of railways was set in India not to facilitate the development of the economy and ensure free movement of good and people across the nation but to facilitate easy movement of raw material and finished good throughout the market in the Indian economy. At the same time, the idea was to have a unified control over the administrative affairs in India by the British rulers. Lack of heavy and basic industries. There was lack of heavy machine making industries providing and manufacturing basic necessity goods. Then we move to the next topic that is foreign trade and its characteristics. India had been turned into a mere exporter of raw material. Instead of using these raw material for manufacturing goods in the economy, India was basically exporting them. And on the other hand, it was importing finished British goods. British had a monopoly control over India's foreign trade. It did not allow India to maintain healthy trading relationships with the other country. Drain of India's wealth. In a way, Britain was draining away India's resources to feed up the process of industrialization taking place in their own country and making India poorer and poorer. More dependence on primary sector. If we come to the occupational structure of the economy, majority of the people were dependent on agriculture for their livelihood. 72% of the population directly derived their earning from agriculture. 10% was involved in industries and the manufacturing sector, whereas hardly 18% of the workforce was involved in the service sector. Underdeveloped infrastructure, absence of good roads, electricity, health, educational facility, communication facilities were some of the basic resources lacking in the economy which obstructed the process of economic development. However, efforts were continuously being made to develop basic infrastructure like railways, roadways, ports, water transportation by the British rulers. But the objective behind these development activities was not to encourage and boost up the economic development of India, but to make it easy for them to administer the economic affairs of India and have a control over the different regions. Adverse demographic condition. As we have discussed in the previous classes, demographic condition basically refers to the features related to the population of the economy. High death rate, high birth rate. The death rate was as high as 40 per thousand and the birth rate being 48, which showed that there was lack of basic medical amenities and facilities in the country and leading to a high death rate and a high birth rate. High infant mortality rate, that is the number of infants dying per thousand live births. It was recorded that the infant mortality rate or the IMR was 218 per thousand. That means out of every 1,000 children born, 218 were dying before attaining the age of one year. Mass illiteracy. The illiteracy was as high as 84%. Low life expectancy. The average lifespan of an Indian, as you can see, due to lack of basic amenities, was very low. It was as low as 
44 years. Low standard of living. Lack of public health facilities like drinking water, sanitation, etc. Housing facilities was also not available. Increasing number of slums, poor living conditions were the basic features of Indian economy at the time of independence. The female literacy level was still lower and it was hardly 7%. Some positive impacts of the British colonial rule. The Britishers made arrangements for transportation facilities and laid the foundation of railways. They also ensured the development of ports and harbours in the economy. Provision of post and telegraph services. Next, the British government also left a base of strong, efficient administrative setup. The main idea was to have a political control over the economic affairs of the economy. This was for the first time that political and economic unification of the country was taking place in a systematic manner. The Britishers also laid down the foundation of the banking and the monetary system in the economy. So we finish with the revising of the first chapter of Indian economy that is Indian economy on the eve of independence. Please go through the chapter in detail. This was a brief summary of the important topics related to the chapter. Thank you.